Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on C programming and in this tutorial, this is actually an extension of the last tutorial wherein uh, we'll be st we'll be, I just started with explaining the concepts required for writing a matrix multiplication program. In the last video we saw how, the, we saw, uh, how to initialize matrices during the declaration and also the uh, requirement, the need of macros or uh, preprocessor based constants. And now what we're going to do is that we just continue from where we dropped off in the last video. Okay, so here we initialize matrix one, mat the first input matrix manually, and then similarly we can define the mini matrix matrix two as follows. So for example, I'm taking a four by two matrix. I mean, I'm taking a four by four matrix one, just size four by four, and second matrix as a size four by two. And then what I'm doing in the program is that. And defining an output matrix, uh, output matrix with size uh, max row and max call. I'm not, I'm not. I mean, we have to calculate the values of this matrix, so we're not going to set set this up with anything. And now what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a temporary sum value to it. Okay, a, sum, a temporary sum value to it. Um, this is actually va named S, which which will be used for temporary calculations. And then I create a value called as choice. Okay. The reason why I put this is that I'm just going to ask the user like if you want to do this as a demo or you want to enter your own values and that's what we're going to choose over here. If suppose the user, I mean, so if I run, if I show this, it says print uh, proceed with default values, yes or no. Okay. And I ask the user to say yes or no. If the user says yes, okay, I want the user to enter the number of rows and number of columns manually so that the user can, so I mean number of rows and number of columns. So thereby the user can pre, uh, re overwrite the existing values, overwrite the existing values with new values. That's the that's the main idea behind it. So how do I do that? It's as follows. I mean this if condition is if if, if and only if the user decides to change the value. Okay. So to get the number of rows and number of columns sizes from the matrix, it's uh, from the user. It's fairly straightforward. You just use you just print put a printf to tell the user what exactly, what specifically you're asking for. And then you put the scan of the simple notation uh, and you get the data out, fairly simple. And to get the matrix data, that is a bit uh, pesky, for which you have to use the nested for loops. Nested for loops. Um, this is actually a pesky one because you have to be ca cautious here. So, uh, so f uh, since, uh, let's take this 2D matrix. What we're going to do is that we have, uh, if you manually look at it, first we'll take the, first we'll uh, go to row one and fill the f first uh, first column. And in row two, we'll fill the second column, third column and fourth column. After all the columns in row one is filled, then we'll go to second row, we'll fill the first column, second column, third column, fourth column, like that. So you're actually having two kinds of loops. One loop that uh, goes along the columns and another loop that goes along the rows, okay? So you need actually two kinds of for loops over here. This loop will actually traverse the entries along the rows and this loop will traverse the entries along the columns. Okay, so that's what I've written over here. If, when I put i equal to zero and i less than r1, r1 is actually the number of rows in row, I mean matrix one, and I increment this with i plus plus and I write another for loop inside it Okay, with J starting from zero and J will less than C1 and J plus plus, the values of this matrix will be, well, uh, and, uh, and then what I do is I then write a printf statement over here and then I put a scanner to get the data and look at what I'm doing. I'm just uh, put past the address of the matrix with, I mean, mat well, the array of the matrix here with the value, with the entry, entry index I comma J. So if, the, if I run this for loop, and I print i comma j values. For the first for during the or and during the first iteration, it will be zero. It will be zero comma zero. The second iteration will be zero comma two, zero comma, and then it will be zero comma I mean, zero comma zero, zero comma one, zero comma two, zero comma three, so on and so forth till zero comma c minus one. Okay, and then it will be. 1 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, all the way up to 1 comma C minus, C1 minus minus 1. And then it will go on and so on and so forth till the last, finally it will be R minus 1 comma 0, R minus 1 comma 1, R minus 1 comma 2 like that. So this is going to each ask me the entries each and every time. 
So just to give a demo of this, I'm just going to run, I mean, uh, compile this and build this and execute this code just to give a, just to give the, uh, I mean, entry th this part alone. Okay, I'm just going to say proceed with default values. Yes, uh, this should have been no, anyway. Anyway, uh, that's a uh, bug, I'll just fix it up. Now it'll ask me for a uh, number, number of rows in matrix A. So I put this to be uh, two. Number of columns in matrix A, I just to be put it two again. And let me enter the identity matrix. So it'll ask me to enter the value of zero comma zero because in the, during the first, I, in the first iteration of this nested looping, the i comma i value is zero and j value is zero, so it's actually pointing to, pointing me towards a zero comma zero. Okay, so I enter the value one since it's a two D uh, one by one uh, identity matrix. So first entry is zero. So now I'm actually in row zero column one, so this has to be zero. And now I am in row one column zero, which is again zero, and then I put this to be one. There we're finishing the identity matrix, and now. Uh, this matrix is B, so I have to enter the, I mean, I just continue the same process for the matrix B, uh, B as well, input matrix B as well, so I specify the size for 2, number of rows in 2, uh, two and number of columns to be 2, and I enter some value like 1, 2, 3, 4, and voila. It actually did the matrix multiplication as well, so it just says the matrix is, matrix A is 1, 0, 0, 1. And I put this five symbols over here to make it look a little matrix-like. Okay, I uh, will talk about that in a, we'll talk about that in a, in another video. So you get this matrix and you get this matrix and you look at it. The val numbers are placed perfectly. Okay, just if you look at matrix A and B and matrix C is actually done after calculating the getting the values and doing nested multiplications. So that is during matrix multiplication. We'll talk about that. So essentially the carry away point uh, in this video is that you have to use nested loops uh, for to get the data da in, uh, to initialize the data manually from the user. Okay. And this is how you do it. You write, you write a for loop to, sp uh, to loop through each and uh, each row and write another for loop to, uh, to uh, loop through each columns. And if suppose if a 2D array, 3D array, you have to write three nested for loops, uh, one loop inside another, like you have to set three loops and proceed further like this method. So this is how you do for matrix one. And likewise, if I just rip, co copy this and just in replace uh, matrix A with matrix B terms, and you, you, you'll also be able to get, I mean, uh, enter the matrices, enter the entries for matrix B as ma matrix two as well. And uh, I think this should be no. So let me run this, compile, build and execute this. Yep. And if I press Ctrl C, I can close the term, I can shut the terminal off. Okay. Now in the next video, I'll be talking about the actual matrix multiplication loop and uh, how the matrix gets and the matrix gets printed, printed nicely. Okay. Now that's all I have for you all in this video. So stay tuned in the next video where we'll be uh, looking at the matrix multiplication.